Michael Weber, artistic director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Premiering on movie screens January 28, 1948, You Were Meant for Me, starring Dan Daly and Gene Crane, with a screenplay by Alec Mall and Valentine Davies, was meant as a timely follow-up to a pair of period musicals that had performed well for 20th Century Fox in the previous two years. Margie, in 1946, starring Crane as a 1920s teenager, and Mother Wore Tights in 1947, starring Daly as a vaudeville star who marries a chorus girl. With the working titles The Flapper Age and The Flaming Age, You Were Meant for Me was shot after but released before Dan Daly's Give My Regards to Broadway in an apparent attempt to capitalize on the success of both Daly and Crane's previous hits. The film's director was the versatile Lloyd Bacon, who worked in many genres, but he's best remembered for backstage musicals made during his long stint at Warner Brothers, where he worked from 1925 until his move to 20th Century Fox in 1944. His most celebrated achievement is the 1933 classic 42nd Street. You Were Meant for Me is a partial uncredited remake of the 1942 20th Century Fox production Orchestra Wives. In some ways, it's also a modest remake of Bacon's 42nd Street. Again, there's lots of music and dance. Again, the story centers on entertainers under pressure. And again, their biggest challenges are financial ones, sparked by the same Great Depression that cast a dark shadow over show business in the earlier film. The movie's music is irresistible, with evergreens like Happy Days Are Here Again and Ain't She Sweet?, Crazy Rhythm has craziness and rhythm galore, and a high-octane performance of Ain't Misbehavin', the unforgettable Fats Waller hit, is downright thrilling. Amiable standards like I'll Get By and Good Night, Sweetheart add additional toe-tapping, and if you love the Roaring Twenties, you'll enjoy them even more. You Were Meant for Me goes through several generations of 20th century American music, from the Roaring Twenties through the Depression, and finally to the hopes and dreams of the Roosevelt era of a New Deal. The themes of support and understanding through even the worst of times are still vital today, making this more than just a nostalgic entertainment. Dan Daly reprised his role in a June 28, 1948 episode of the Lux Radio Theater, co-starring Donna Reed, but the episode was preempted by the Republican National Convention. Fortunately, he repeated his performance the next year, and that is the broadcast we have for you now. Here on the March 13, 1949 episode of the Screen Director's Playhouse is star Dan Daly from the 1948 film with Betty Lynn in You Were Meant for Me. From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... <laughs> Screen Director's Assignment, Production You Were Meant for Me, Director Lloyd Bacon, Star Dan Daly. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a romance set to music, You Were Meant for Me. Starring Academy Award nominee Dan Daly in his original role with Betty Lynn. And introducing the director of the film, Lloyd Bacon. The life story of our guest screen director tonight reads like a saga of show business. Born into a distinguished theatrical family, he himself became first a stage actor and then a film actor and director. His was one of the first minds to grasp the full potentialities of motion picture sound, and his pioneering in this field established him as one of Hollywood's most resourceful and versatile artists. You've seen the fine touch of his direction in such grand entertainment as Mother is a Freshman, Give My Regards to Broadway, The Sullivans, 
I wonder who's kissing her now. And tonight's story, You Were Meant for Me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lloyd Bacon. Folks, our story tonight is about the closing years of an era of show business. Years packed with glitter and excitement. But somehow they were full of sweet music. Making You Were Meant for Me was a nostalgic thrill. And I hope you'll find the same thrill as we relive part of those years. Relive them with Dan Daly as an orchestra leader, Chuck Arnold, and Betty Lynn as Peggy Mayhew. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is an era. Here is You Were Meant for Me. What a year. It was the beginning of the end of the era of wonderful nonsense. Billion Dollar Gates, Red Grange, The Galloping Ghost, Flagpole Sitters and Marathon Dancers, Admiral Byrd planning the Stars and Stripes in Little America, Rhapsody in Blue, Paul Whiteman was King of Jazz, and George Gershwin and Irving Berlin were the men behind the throne. Common stocks and women's skirts were mounting to new heights, and I was doing pretty well myself. I had a smart little band, Chuck Arnold and his sophisticates, that played the smaller circuits in one night stands. We were doing a shot in Bloomington, and the dance pavilion was packed with the flaming youth of the town. That's when I met my Waterloo. Bloomington, 1929. Crazy rhythm, here's the doorway. I'll go my way, you go your way. Crazy rhythm, from now on we're through. Here is where we have a showdown. I'm too high hat, you're too low down. Crazy rhythm, here's goodbye to you. They say that when a highbrow meets a lowbrow walking along Broadway, soon the highbrow, he has no brow, ain't it a shame? And you're to blame. What's the use of prohibition? You produce the same condition. Crazy rhythm, I've gone crazy too. Here's what you've all been waiting for, somebody's big moment to win a prize. Now hold your breath and hold on to your checks while my brilliant manager and arranger here, Mr. Oscar Hoffman of Green Park, New York, selects the lucky number out of this bowl. For this, I gave up a concert career. Here you are, hot shot. Thank you, Oscar. And here it is, folks. Hold your breath. Yeah, hold it good and long. Here is the lucky number. It is 864. The number? 864. Who's got it? 864. Me. Me. Mimi has it. Well, Mimi. <laughs> Come on up here to the bandstand, huh, girl? Come on up. Don't be nervous. Here she comes, folks. Give her a great big hand. Well, Mimi, Mimi. Mimi with the 864. Come on, everybody. Let's give this girl a great big hand. Ah, uh, fortune smiles on a lovely lady, Miss... Uh, Mayhew. Peggy Mayhew. The lovely Miss Peggy Mayhew. And I'm not kidding. Lovely. Spelled W-O-W. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Peggy. And now for the prizes. Let's see what we have. Uh, one book of green trading stamps from Bob's department store. Very nifty. <laughs> and there's a, a season pass for the Poli Theater. Good Tuesday matinees. <laughs> and one article of feminine attire. Uh, that's, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's gift wrapped from Wee Bowls the Papa Store. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Arnold. All right, and now in honor of this very lovely little lady, the boys and I would like to do a special arrangement of You Were Meant for Me. <clears throat> uh, your hand, beautiful lady. Oh, no. I mean, yes, sir. You were meant for me. I was. I looked down at Peggy Mayhew as I sang. I saw the worship in her eyes, and I thought, oh, here's another cruel struck girl. You. Only there was more and to this girl. All her heart was in her eyes, and it must you have been a good heart, because those eyes were beautiful. All at once, I wasn't kidding. Like all at once, I meant every word of that song. 
this was it. Peggy Mayhew. Uh, Peggy Waterloo. After a third of a lifetime of girls, this was the girl. And I I am content the angels must have sent you, and they meant you just for me. Thank you very much. All right, boys, take it. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold? <laughs> Chuck, it was very nice. I, I enjoyed it. Oh, wait a minute. You're beautiful, you know that? Oh, thank you. May I have my hand back now? How about a prize for me? Prize? Yeah, uh, a kiss. All right. You ask for it. There. Hey. Whew. That's big time foliage you got there. Well, I've got to go. No, 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 wait a minute. Look, look, Peggy. Meet me after the dance tonight. I can't, Chuck. I'm with a date. Well, meet me after the country lad takes you home. Not tonight. We play Peoria tomorrow night. How about coming over? I don't know, Chuck. Well, say you'll try. All right, I'll try. I'll try. I'll see you in my dreams Hold you in my dreams I did get to Peoria the next night. I could hear Chuck singing inside, but the doorman wouldn't let me in without an escort. I saw Oscar, Chuck's manager, and, and I gave him a note for Chuck. Yeah, yeah, she gave me a note. Only I have a tender place in my heart for small-town girls who fall in love with Chuck Arnold. I tore the note up. I kept waiting for Peggy to show up, and when she didn't, I got a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach, like when I lost my graduation watch and didn't know where to start looking. We finished playing at midnight. I went out afterward to walk off my disappointment. I passed the bus station, and there on a bench was Peggy Mayhew. Hey, Peggy. Hey, beautiful. Chuck. What happened? Where, where were you? Well, they wouldn't let me in, so I gave Oscar a note. I don't know what happened. I thought you were... I never got any note. Oh, I've been waiting and waiting, and, and now it's time for the last bus home. No, no, baby. How about something to eat? I've got to get back home. Well, one goodbye kiss. No, Chuck, one kiss was enough, and I'm ashamed of... Look, baby, I mean business. Chuck. Ooh. Oh. Some voltage. Oh, Chuck, I, I thought I was never going to see you again. Well, you're going to see a lot of me from now on. I'm going to find us a justice of the peace. Justice of the peace? Yep. I just proposed to you, and you just accepted it. Oh, Chuck, darling. Writing another letter, baby? Mm-hmm, Mom and Dad. <laughs> hey, tell them about this plug and variety. Arnold Combo Garner's Top Grocers on Midwest Flapper Circuit. Not bad, huh? Oh, it's wonderful. Pretty soon you'll be on the front page. Yeah, well, pretty soon you'll be writing the folks from New York. New York? Oh, Chuck, are we going to New York? We're booked into the Pennsylvania roof right after the first of the year. The Pennsylvania roof? Well, that's a big time. <laughs> There's been a long pull, baby, but land is in sight. Chuck Arnold, now playing Pennsylvania roof. Oh, I can see it in variety here. Arnold Combo sensation pen debut. Hey, you write home to Mother and let Variety write their headlines. Huh? <laughs> Chuck, what does this headline mean? Wall Street lays an egg. Hmm? Oh, all that, uh, nothing. Just, just forget it, man. Forget it. Well, you can't make me forget that today is our anniversary. No kidding? Mm-hmm, two months. Well, let's go dancing someplace after the show. All right, Chuck. <laughs> A busman's holiday, huh? After the show, we got a heavy date, it girl. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, boys, that closes shop for the night. Rehearsal, 10 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Chuck! Uh-oh, battle station, boys. Song plugger off the starboard beam. Hi, you there, Chucky boy. Hi, Oscar. Hi, boys. Chuck wants you to have a look at the biggest thing to hit the board since Purple ran into Dempsey. Have a look at the sleeve. Now, wait a minute. I'll I gotta circulate th- among the town here and give you copies and give it a fast rundown. I am Earl. I'm Goldie. First baby. Last song he showed me was Stardust. It'll never get any place. Anyway, who ever heard of Hoagie Carmichael? Hey, is this the best you've got? It's an awful crummy title. Great title, great song, great arrangement, just for you. A ranger opened the vein and wrote it with his heart's blood. Try it, kid. Get near this one. Okay, let's go. Once over lightly, boys. What can we lose? No one to walk with all by myself. No one to talk with I happy on the shelf misbehaving I'm saving my love for you I know for certain the one I love I'm through with flirting it's you I'm thinking of hey misbehaving I'm saving my love for you like Jack Horner in corner don't go nowhere what do i care your kisses are worthwhile waiting for believe me i don't go out late don't care to go i'm home about eight me and the radio ain't misbehaving i'm saving all my love for you Ain't misbehaving cause I'm saving all my love Yes, I'm slaving and I'm raving even when the flag's above Ain't celebrating cause I want to keep me rating I'd be hating to be dating if I kept my baby waiting Like Jack Horner in a corner Don't go nowhere, what do I care? Your kisses are worthwhile waiting One, two, three, four, believe me Ain't fooling around, tearing all over town like a clown or a hound, cause I'm about to get crowned. Yes. What do you know? That is that is going to be a smash. Yeah, Oscar. yeah. Well, who'd, absolute who'd, who'd, smash. Who, who'd have thought it was three a.m. You know, and what a smash hit you're going to be with Peggy. What are you talking about? Oh, well, yeah, you, you had a date with her three hours ago. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, uh, good night, fellas. I got to go. Now wait a minute. H- hold it, hold it, Chuck. You see, she's uh, asleep now. Your date is ruined anyhow. So I can tell you what I was going to hold back from you until tomorrow. What's the matter? It's been a bad Friday on Wall Street. How are we on the market? Cleaned out. Now you better sit down while I break the bad news. All of it. Hi, this is Porchlight's production and operation director, Alex Ryan. Thank you for listening to WPMT. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today to Porchlight Music Theater at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and we hope you enjoy the show. You are listening to the Hollywood Screen Director's presentation of You Are Meant For Me, starring Academy Award nominee Dan Daly in his original role, with Betty Lynn and Jim Backus, and introducing the director of the film, Lloyd Bacon. night I let Oscar conduct while I stood aside holding hands with Peggy trying to break the bad news. All of them. Chuck, it, it doesn't matter if you've lost your money. You're just starting on your career. There's New York. Look, honey, we don't get to play New York. Oh. Well, you, you always did well on tour. Yeah, well, you should see the cancellations pouring in. Our whole tour is falling apart. Well, we'll just put Humpty Dumpty together again, that's all. That was the band's next to the last number. We're all finished tonight, Peg. We're breaking up. Oh. I, I didn't know it was that bad. It's worse. Uh, it is, it's just a flurry, though. Don't worry. We're broke. Now, don't worry, I tell you. 
I'm just being practical. I was just thinking, what a, a wonderful opportunity for me to, to see my folks back in Bloomington. I thought you were crazy to go to New York. Well, if you want to know, I, I'm homesick. Homesick? You sure? Kind of. Oh, well, that's different if you're homesick. Of course, if you wanted to go back just to save money... Oh, I... no. If you're homesick, that's different. You'll love living in Bloomington for a while. Sure I will. That's where I met you. Oh, look, Oscar's signaling you. It's your number. It's my number, but it's for you, Peg. I'll get by as long as I have you. Oh, there be rain and darkness too. I'll not complain. I'll see it through. of the Flapper Circuit in 1929 and back into Bloomington. And life with father and life with mother. Peggy's father and Peggy's mother. Chuck was so proud. I remember the day in Brock's drugstore when we were pretending we were just resting in Bloomington before taking a big job at the Flamingo Room in Miami. The drugstore Victoria was playing Chuck's version of Ain't She Sweet. She are coming down street. Now I ask you very confidentially, ain't she sweet? Ain't My she old boyfriend, nice. Eddie, was getting suspicious of our story and the need to check it out. And I guess that made Chuck do what he did. Hey, uh, Eddie, here's a $20 bill. I gotta go. Pay for the sodas all around and buy all the kids a copy of Ain't She Sweet with my compliments. Let's go, baby. Chuck, that was kind of crazy tossing away our last $20 like that. Yeah? Look at what came in the mail today. Hey, look. Step over by the streetlight. Open it. A check? Yep. Royalties, $278. Famous Records Company Quarterly Accounting. Why, we're rich. Now, will you let me run things around here? It's just that one of us has to be practical, dear. All right, tell you what. From now on, you be practical and I'll be beautiful, Okay. Okay, beautiful. Okay, practical. <laughs> now, Peggy, there's nothing for you to worry about. Lots of women have babies. Well, I was thinking about Chuck, Doctor. He'll receive excellent care. I mean, he, he doesn't know yet. Well, tell him he's a big boy now. Uh, take a spoonful of that malt and cod liver oil whenever you think of it. You don't need it, but it'll make you feel precious. Hello, Mother. Well, where have you been all morning, Peggy? I... I had to go to the drugstore. Is Chuck still asleep? Naturally. It's only noon. Mother... Chuck sleeps late because his, his rhythm is different than ordinary people. Well, if he was my husband, he'd change his rhythm to march time, I can tell you. Mother, so long as Chuck is pulling our weight around here, I'm not going to let him be bullied into doing just anything. In fact, I, I see there's another letter on the table from the famous records. That means we'll have some money for you this afternoon. <laughs> My dear Mr. Arnold, please be advised that the famous records company has on this date filed petition and bankruptcy. That's all, Peggy. No check? 
I'll check. How can a big concern like that go broke? I don't get it. I just don't get it. Hello? Who? Oh, well, just a minute. He's right here. Chuck, Chicago calling. It's Oscar. Hello, hello, Oscar. Hello. How are... Yeah. Yeah, go on. Seventy-five dollars a week? Well, the answer is no. Chuck? No, thanks, Oscar, but you ought to know I can't work for that kind of money. Chuck, it'll tide us over for a while. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Oscar. Goodbye. Oh, calling back, Chuck, calling back. Here, let me... Give me that phone. You crazy? Suppose it gets around that I was playing for $75 a week. But suppose something came up, a, a big doctor bill or something like that. Seventy-five a week is better than nothing at all. It's big money in Bloomington. Not to me, it isn't. I'd rather dig ditches or take in floors to scrub. You ball out your old man because he doesn't sell as many bricks in his brick factory as he used to? Well, at least he's working. He's always in there trying. He doesn't just mope around week after week, sponging on the family and... <gasps> I didn't mean that, Chuck. Okay, Peggy. You've said enough. Chuck, I... I didn't mean to hurt you. I'll be toddling along now. I'm through sponging off your family. I'm going to New York. You want to come along? Okay. You want to stay here? Okay, too. Is that your ultimatum, I said Chuck? you can come along. I'm not going to beg you. You don't have to. You can go, Chuck. Alone. Okay. I'll send for my things. Show the world how to smile. I could be glad all of the while. I could change the gray skies to blue if, if I, I had, had you. Peggy, I will you please turn off that big troller down there? Yes, Mother. Has that husband of yours come in yet? No, Mother. What? He isn't coming home. I can't hear you. Wait. There. Can you hear me now? I was trying to tell you that that husband of mine isn't... Oh. Oh. Oscar. Well, don't be so cordial. You'll have trouble getting rid of me. Look, I get dizzy standing on a thick rug. So what do I do? I spend the afternoon in an airplane to get here just to talk Chuck out of a slight case of lunacy. Where is the guy? He left for New York early today, and, and as far as I'm concerned, he can stay there. Couldn't take it, could he? Glass jaw. I think you're being a little harsh on him. You can't still be in love with the quitter. He's not a quitter. You ought to be ashamed calling yourself Chuck's friend. Oh, you don't hate the guy, then. Oh, Oscar. Oscar, what am I going to do? Well... You might try serving up some dinner for a working man. Chuck! <laughs> Hi, Oscar. Get you in overalls. Well, working all day in your old man's brickyard is work, Peggy. Oh, darling, I thought... And you hurt your foot. Wheelbarrow ran over me. Dr. Jones said for me just to take that stuff he gave you. Gave me? Yeah. Doc wants me to keep up my strength. He says we're going to have a baby. <laughs> Chuck and Peggy in a clinch and went to a neutral corner. Somehow they made out together just the way the rest of America made out together. Then wheels began to creak into motion again. The dead eyes of factories sparkle again. There was nothing to fear but fear itself, the man said. I saw Chuck the other day. His wife and I had a ringside seat at the Pennsylvania roof. Oscar, it's our lucky number song. Remember, 1929? Yeah, here he comes. Silver in his voice and a gleam in his eye. <laughs> Winning number is 864. Who's got 864? Me, me. Hello, Mimi. 
I love you, darling. Happy anniversary. I'm content the angels must have sent you and they met you In just a moment, our stars will return. Next week, the NBC Theater takes a long, hard look at domestic bliss as it brings you the satirical comedy, The Perfect Marriage, starring 1948 Academy Award winner Loretta Young in her original role. And on following weeks, you will hear Fred McMurray and Bob Hope. And now, here are tonight's stars, Dan Daly and Betty Lynn and screen director Lloyd Baker. Mr. Bacon, there's something I don't understand about your head. Yes, Billy Lynn. Well, Dan Daly told me you always wear a baseball cap. Sure. Lloyd has a number one cap and a number two cap. The number one is the lid worn by last season's champs. He wears that when everything's going well on the set. What about number two cap? Oh, well, that cap from the team at the bottom of the heap. He wears that one when there's trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but what does it mean when he doesn't wear any cap at all? Means it's too darn hot in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, before we say goodnight, I'd like to offer my thanks for the way you've shared your great knowledge of show business with the actors and actresses who've worked with you. Mister, working under your direction has really been an education. After a compliment like that, Dan, there's only one way I can show my appreciation. What's that, Mr. Bacon? Put on my number one baseball cap. Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night. Good night. And good night to you, Dan Daly, Betty Lynn, and Lloyd Bacon. You Were Meant for Me was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of Down to the Sea and Ships. Dan Daly is currently starring in the 20th Century Fox production, Chicken Every Sunday. And Betty Lynn may be seen in the 20th Century Fox film, Mother is a Freshman. Included in tonight's cast were Jim Backus, Bill Tracy, Irene Tedrow, Norman Field, and Dan Ritz. You Were Meant for Me, based on the story Orchestra Wife by James Prindle, was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, an original music composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Bill Carr. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, The Perfect Marriage, Director, Lewis Allen, Star, Loretta Young... <laughs> NBC Theater came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. According to gossip columnist Sheila Graham, Marilyn Monroe had a role in You Were Meant For Me that ended up getting cut. But in a scene on a crowded dance floor, there's a face which looks a lot like Monroe's amongst those in the throng. Next time you see the film, be sure to look for her. Born in New York City, Dan Daly started his career in vaudeville, later making his Broadway debut in the stage version of Babes in Arms. When signed to MGM, the studio initially cast him as a Nazi in The Mortal Storm in 1940. They soon realized their mistake and cast him in musical films thereafter. After serving in World War II, Daly later returned to acting and to making more musicals. Born in Kansas City, Missouri, Betty Lynn is best known for her role as Thelma Lou, Deputy Barney Fife's girlfriend on The Andy Griffith Show. During the 1940s and 50s, she appeared in many films, including Sitting Pretty and June Bride in 1948, the original Cheaper by the Dozen in 1950, and Meet Me in Las Vegas in 1956. Theaters across the country need your support now. More than ever, we hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber.